So it's been a while since I've done my daily, uh, my daily carry sustainer tour. I've been constantly adjusting and upgrading these two toolboxes. Um, these are pretty much the ones that come into almost every job I do almost every day. Um, at the very least, at the very least, the uh, the three drawer one comes to every single job. Uh, I'll show you why in a second. That one pretty much takes every single job as well. Both of uh, the boxes stack on top of each other like you'd expect from any sustainer setup. Uh, they, they dock really nicely onto a sustainer dolly, one of the carts, and roll around pretty good height at that point. Um, but what I'm gonna do is quickly take you through each one individually. I'm not gonna look at every single tool. Um, could certainly do that at a different time, but I wanna show you the basic layout and design and the way I think about putting these kits together and why they work so well for me. Um, so I'll show you the three drawers in uh, the drawer sustainer. Uh, the first drawer is probably the most used drawer I have. As such, it's probably the most well organized and most uh, constantly adjusted. Everything in here I use quite a bit. Um, so starting on the left, we have just a really simple block with some uh, commonly used bits here, counter sinks, uh, hex, etc. Off to the left, we have a long storage channel which has the uh, flexible, flexible drill dongle. It has two longer uh, drill bits as well. In the back, you can see I have a couple of other uh, larger drill bits, my high-end uh, countersink. I have a large Forstner bit and a large step bit. Then the index is just a standard high-quality American-made index. I've got some of my commonly used sizes in the bottom. And then it just indexes normal here. This next row has some bits, but also has a couple of different Forstner bits as well that I tend to use. And then the final row has up to a half inch uh, twist bit, but also has um, six inch, uh, one eighth inch bits, uh, one inch Forstner, uh, my commonly used half inch step, and a Craig, a Craig uh, bit. I obviously have more Craig bits, but it's nice to have one, you know, just floating around. To adjust the Craig bit, also to adjust my countersink. Then here we have obviously a series of um, driver bits. So this one I've actually primed and painted white, which was a good idea, it worked pretty well. I've actually labeled it, which helps a lot. Uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, then 30, 40, whatever in my stars. Uh, I've got a driver bit, and then all my normal driver sizes, square, Phillips, whatever. I've got a small uh, Makita ratchet kit, which has a set for the impact driver. I also have a tiny little ratchet, which is great for uh, obviously using as a ratchet, but it's great for driving in tiny little spaces with one of these small heads. You can fit almost anywhere. Got a couple of masonry uh, tile bits here as well, and a magnetizer, and then I have uh, obviously other bits, some long bits, drill pullers, countersink bits, hex bits. Um, and this side, I actually use this side a lot, especially this column. Test some of my longer drivers, Craig, T25, number two Phillips, and then I have my, uh, whatever these things are called, the centering, self-centering bits. Uh, I have a couple of magnetic bits, and I have another right angle bit here, and then a hook bit, and like a little extra one that doesn't really get used much. Got a couple spare batteries in the back. Tiny drivers here, uh, like tiny little zero zero hex drivers, door stop. So, moving on. Uh, this drawer is not used as much. It has uh, some snips, a bunch of random stuff, just tape, pencils. Uh, you know, you can see what's there. Uh, denatured alcohol, clear epoxy, nail polish. Good for touching stuff up here and there, sealing stuff, um, shims playing cards as shims, some other random shims, uh, microfiber rag, roll of high quality masking tape, a couple sanding pads, basic spray lubricant gloves, scouring pad, like a scraping, scraping tool in there, 
And then my bottom one, also frequently used, it houses a Bosch Flexi Click driver. I store it with uh, the driver head typically. It's not a great drill, a uh, drill head, excuse me. It's not a great drill, honestly, it's underpowered. Uh, but it's great to have in this kit. The nice thing about having it here is I can basically take this kit in if all I need to do is some basic adjusting and driving. And I can drive with this, I can drill with this, I can do all sorts of weird right angles and stuff with the head attachments, spare battery. So yeah, so this kit pretty much gives you an all-in-one driving setup if, if you want to just go in really light. Um, but yeah, I have an angle finder, a couple different stud finders, a distance finder, simple electrical tool, uh, compass slash scribing tool. I got like a saw blade setup tool, a couple of small fasteners, a couple of larger fasteners. Honestly, I have whole fastener kits, uh, moisture meter. But again, this is my daily kit. I'm not expecting to uh, to build anything really with these. Sometimes it'll just save me a trip. So anyways, that's why I keep these fasteners here. So that's this main kit. On to the toolbox. Starting in the front, a couple things here. I have some magnets underneath which hold uh, nice flashlight. Nice thing here is when this box is fastened to that box and that light's on, I can see all my bits. So if I'm in a dark area or really can't see what's going on, turn the light on, ton of visibility. Also, I can pull it off and attach it other places. It attaches underneath, it attaches on top with magnets. It's got magnets on the base. So pretty useful light. It's also uh, lightweight and uh, runs on regular batteries. So I got the head for my uh, little dust buster. Um, at some point I'll probably put an attachment to hold a roll of tape here, but that's all I got for now. Built a little shelf. It's really, really simple. It's just a piece of PVC, two inch hole, uh, three quarter inch hole. And the nice thing about this setup, again, thinking about efficiency and workflow, uh, this is not gonna work now without the head on it. But I'll put the head on, show you what I'm talking about. This is my normal driver head. So with these two set up, you know, again, regardless of what I'm doing, even if I'm set up for two weeks or two months on a site, this is always set up. If I'm pulling my drivers out of one area, I can have this set up right where I need it. Pull my driver, set my driver. So, again, really nice way not to lose your tools and be really efficient. Back to the box. I have two low quality magnets and one high quality magnet. These are these magnets are plenty to hold hold on loosely. This one obviously is much more secure. This is the neodymium magnet. And I have a nice speed square, which just slides right in. Inside this box, just to show you what I did, this is just a plywood, um, I don't know, what cutout system. So, it just sits in there, it's not fastened to anything. And I'll really quickly run through what I have in there. At a bubble level, nail puller, a couple punches. I actually have a really small pliers, high quality scissors, uh, high quality mini bolt cutter, snips, snips, all spring loaded punch, mini crescent wrench, uh, slip, uh, what is it, uh, slip jaw pliers, three sided file, nice Vera screwdriver here, multi, multi headed, you can pop out this head to actually use it on a drill driver as well. Crescent wrench, wire stripper slash pliers, small Japanese pull saw, five in one painter's tool. And then, let's see if I can do that, okay. I also have a bunch more stuff jammed in there. I'll show you what I got. Got a mini carpenter square. Honestly, I find myself using this less and less. Uh, I've swapped it out for some other tools, so that might get jettisoned, but it's nice to have in there. I have a uh, small extendable magnetic reaching tool. I rarely use it, but the one time you need it, it's invaluable. And then on the other side, something somewhat similar. Uh, my daily lightweight driver stays in there all the time got a small block plane 
a couple rolls of high quality masking tape again, single pencil, a shorty hammer, which has a little magnet and a resting place. Again, huge piece of what makes these toolboxes such a pleasure to use is I don't have to move anything to get to anything. I'm not wasting any time moving one tool out of the way to get to another tool. Every single tool can be pulled without moving any other tool. Everything has a place, nothing gets lost. So onto this side, 16 inch tabula level, dust brush, head for my dust buster. Inside there I keep a couple of uh, solo cups, quite useful, holding parts, mixing up paints or other solvents, very useful. And then on the outside we have flat metal file, small pry tool, fast cap lefty righty 16 foot uh, tape measure, and another magnet on this side that normally holds another level style tool. It's also great for holding my clamp. Same thing on this side. So as we move to this side, we have another file of a Mora chisel, which is also a simple blade. I just modified the, the sheath that came with the Mora and just screwed it into the sustainer. Super secure. This is just a little sustainer box with a magnet. So, believe it or not, the magnet on the other side just fell off. Normally there's a magnet right there on the other side, it just sticks right there. But, that magnet just released. It was just being held on by glue and the glue keeps failing. So anyways, um, but that holds a headlamp. Small headlamp, really strong from Phoenix. We got some, whatever the, industrial post-it notes here. We've got a small Phillips head driver on this side, which I rarely use. But it's there anyways, and on the back, I'm actually going to rotate the whole thing because my lighting is a little bit biased towards the front. So on the back, I got a couple more tools. Um, I have one of these big flexi things, which is just fastened through the sustainer, and it holds a couple of cut up old yoga pads, yoga mats, thin, light, great for kneeling on, they're great for basic sight protection. Again, this is for small and quick setups, but... They're really darn useful all the time. Then I got one more thing built into the back of the sustainer. You can see that I have like, you know, a quarter inch poplar here. That has just been <laughs> pin nailed in. Really, really low tech. But what it holds is a uh, cutting mat. This is, uh, I think it's 12 by nine uh, cutting mat by Vantage. Uh, it's really great for using um, utility knife on. It's basically cut proof. So you can just uh, pound on it, which is really nice. Again, you're working on someone's countertop. You can throw these three things out, get some really quick and easy sight protection. Um, so it makes you look a little more professional. Obviously, you can get some nicer looking ones than this. But these have been running with me for a while, and I use them a lot more than expected. So they've gotten pretty beat up. Um, yeah, and this thing's pretty cool as well. So yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. I know it's been a long video, so I wanted you guys to see everything. Uh, but I think I got it all. Anyways, daily use kits, hopefully that gives you guys some ideas. Thanks for watching.